That's what I figured you did. Uh, hi, <laughs> my name is Jerry Luke, and welcome to Luke's World. Normally, you can hear me on uh, WHCR FM New York 90.3, The Voice of Harlem, every Friday between the hours of 2 and 3.30. The uh, number to call is 1-212-650-6903. Today, we come to you through the auspices of, uh, of what? Of uh, LSMFC Productions, Leo... Leo Farley, our director, and as always, we come to you from the Mark Simzak studio here in New York City. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Uh, it is much appreciated. Uh, so where are we? Um, we're going to get to um, to uh, the uh, the cause celeb today at, in New York, which is um, Ruben Tejada and being taken out of second base in a minute. But what I'd like to get to first is one of my favorite ball players of all time, which is Ikuro Suzuki, who has just been signed to another contract with the Miami Marlins for next year. He's has, he's 65, hits short of 3,000, and once he does that, he'll be within either within striking distance of Pete Rose, or um, uh, yeah, striking distance of Pete Rose. That's how you say that. One way or the other, either, he'll, 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 either he will have surpassed him or he needs a couple of, couple of more hits. So um, I love the way this guy hits. Um, he's always in shape. He's always stretching. He's taking batting practice in his hotel room. Uh, he, he, baseball is his life, and he works it. He's in great shape. And uh, I love the, the, the guy uses the bat like a fly swatter. It's really sort of an, an, an un, uh, a unique kind of hitting. And it's it's uh, it's it's helped him through the years. It's stood by him through the years. Um, what I, uh, I I was going to say something else about him, but I forget. Maybe when, maybe during the next segment, if I remember, I'll let you know. But anyway, congratulations to Ikudu and uh, uh, oh, I think I remember. It's it's tough. The average ball player, I don't know if average ball players make up their minds about staying in baseball or not, uh, but to a certain degree, when, um, when you leave baseball, when you get off that field, you could be a manager, you could be a coach, you could be a general manager, you could own a team, you stop playing. And once you stop playing, that part of your career is over, never to be retrieved. And uh, this guy wants to keep that as long as he can. And... Um, I'm, uh, I, he deserves a pat on the back for doing that. Okay, so let's get to the, uh, let's get to the meat of it. Um, Ruben Tejada. Okay. So let's, let's go, let's go, let's backtrack and, uh, figure out what happened and why we got to this point. Um, we're talking about the Dodger-Mets series. Uh, this is a series I think everybody was looking forward to. Chase Utley gets a hit. He's on first base. Somebody comes in behind him, gets a hit. On his way to second base, Chase Utley decides he's going to take Ruben Tata out. Now, a couple of problems with this is, number one, he when he takes Tata out, he breaks Tata's leg, which is a bad thing. When he took him out as well, he was out of the baseline, which is what the umpire missed. Tejada, to his credit, did this really strange circular move knowing that he missed the base, which is a theory that Leo gave me a couple of, couple of hours ago, which is a good idea. Now, in turning to, to second base to make sure that he got the runner, he took his eyes off the runner, didn't see what Huntley was doing. So, in fact, he was blindsided, which is another reason that he took that terrible fall. Another thing that happened was... Um, Utley was called out at first, and he's going off the field uh, because Utley was called out. Tejada is, didn't touch second base, but it was all adjudicated. Utley was safe. Tejada had a broken leg. He's off the field. Something like that. Um, now, we have to think about... Now, Utley is a bad boy. Yes, he is. Uh, 
but he's not unique. That's the, that's the nature for, for some people in baseball. That's what you do. Back in the day, Ty Cobb, um, he would steal bases with sand in his hand so he could throw the sand into, in, into whoever was covering into that person's face. And that's what, that was okay because that, that was part of the roughhouse part of baseball. And all of a sudden here, uh, we're making a big deal about it. There is a history between um, between uh, Utley and the Mets and having done stuff like this before to the Mets. And uh, you cannot, you cannot, um, you know, you cannot, you can't take the badness out of the guy. That's that's the nature of it, and that's what he's going to do. All right, let's let's take this a little bit further, and um, and and go to go to where what we're go to where what the ramifications of um, of Chase Huntley could possibly cause. First of all, there is no better way to unite a team against you than pulling some crap like that. Uh, years ago, um, uh, David Cohn wrote some letter to the newspaper that the Dodgers were sunk and the series is over. That was between the Dodgers and the Mets. Uh, the Dodgers were behind, I think, two to one, pulled the series out. And you could actually point to the fact that David Cohn's letter was what united this team. So that's a bad, so, so, um, so uh, that's one of the ramifications of it. Now, the teams were also, um, uh, baseball suspended Utley for two games. I think that didn't make any sense, but I mean, that sort of allayed everybody's pain in New York, but that doesn't make any sense. That's part of the game. We all know it's part of the game. Um, now, for the exciting part. The uh, the Dark Knight is pitching tonight. Of all of all games, for the Dark Knight to be uh, to be pitching, it would be tonight. Now both teams have been warned. If you start head hunting, uh, which is throwing uh, balls at, at 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 your at your fellow ball players, whoever's throwing that ball is going to get thrown out. And this goes for both teams. And um, uh, Leo, you got to cool that a little bit there. Okay. Thank you. That goes for both teams. Um, so, and now you have the Dark Knight on the uh, on the mound. And who would you want? Who would you want on that field besides him? Uh, I don't know. A couple of things about the game that that uh, Tejada, uh, in which Tejada was injured. Noah Syndergaard was pitching lights out. He was pitching balls at a hundred miles an hour. He had about I think he finished with about ten strikeouts. Um, and one of the uh, one of the problems here was, um, I think, and it would have it would have probably not led to his being taken to 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 the Tejada injury was Syndergaard should have been taken out after six innings. He gave you six. Uh, you should be happy with that. Bring in a reliever. Unfortunately, the relievers didn't do anything. The Hansel Robles came out, and he's turning into quite a reliever. So that was a big mistake. Now the other thing I think we talked about. Um, we talked about uh, uh, what happens when you when you do something like that, and the teams unite, and that's a good thing, I guess, for the Mets at this point. Um, another thing I'd like to say is, it couldn't have been a better thing for the networks. All of a sudden, whoever's whoever's broadcasting the the, the Met uh, the Met games, their their uh, ratings have to go up incredibly. So there's badness on one part, there's goodness on another part. It's just a never-ending. It's just a never-ending thing. What, to me, is the overarching thing here is that we, as sports fans, can get so excited about this one play. All of a sudden, all Met fans in New York are headhunters, and the Dodgers are the most evil team in the world. And how could this happen to our team? And we're all united. We, 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 we found something to, to unite around and put, our, and put our good feelings into. Well, that's all well and good. We just had this terrible, terrible uh, uh, ordeal happen in Oregon, 
and where some crazy guy got a hold of guns and, and, and massacred eight students. Uh, we have uh, people knocking on our doors at the borders because, I got you, because um, they, they're not coming, they're not, they're not at the borders because they want to be there. They're not at the borders to do us any harm. They're at the borders because they want to get a job so they could feed their families. And if, if American foreign policy didn't screw with Latin America, they would be in their own countries working. But that's what we do. That's why they're at the borders. So all this, okay, let, let, let that go. So you got that, and, and you have the, the immigrants in, in, uh, in coming from Syria into Europe, all because of American foreign policy is, is, is uh, do we really know what we're doing? For that, everybody's scratching themselves. Some of the people don't know what's going on. They're looking at their shoes. So that seems, nobody rallies around that. But if a ball player, God forbid, gets hurt, like last night um, uh, Odell Beckham pulled a hamstring, everybody in New York is, is running out for aspirin. So um, we really got to get our priorities straight. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, I want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the radio. And I got to do this one thing. I, I apologize, but... Uh, I don't even know. Did we play the, the? Did we play our way in? I don't remember. We did play our way in. Let me see if I can screw this up a little more. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.